Good morning. Have I got the, got the microphone at the good level? This morning is uh, September 22nd, 2024. For anybody <clears throat> joining us online after, or now or after, who doesn't know, this is uh, St. John's Presbyterian Church in Toronto, and I'm Maureen Walter, the minister. We're delighted to have with us this morning uh, Mrs. Grace Hahn, our music director. We're thrilled to have our choir back. It's always just wonderful. And we're delighted to have our soloist Emma Pushkalo back with us. And I think we're going to be seeing her quite a bit this year if we're, if we're lucky enough. <clears throat> For thousands of years, this land has been the traditional home of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca, and most recently the Mississaugas of the Credit River. It is still home to Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we're grateful to work, live, and worship on this land. Our call to worship is printed in the bulletin. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol the Lord, all you peoples. For great is God's steadfast love towards us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Let us praise the Lord together. Our opening hymn, number 313, O Worship the King, will sing verses 1, 2, and 5. Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. All the earth acclaims you, O Lord, and we gather to worship you in gladness. The wonders of your creation, 
the splendor of the heavens, the beauty of the earth, the order and richness of nature, all speak to us of your glory. The coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, the presence of your Spirit, the Comforter, the fellowship of your Church, show us the marvel of your love. We worship, we adore you, for you are our God of grace and glory. And yet, in humbleness of heart, we come to you to bring you our troubles and concerns. We know there are times we have forgotten you are with us, and we have wandered from your way. We know we have been careless of this earth you have given to us, and endangered so many of the species of animals on it, and treated unfairly so many of the people on it. Help us to bring our concern to you, that we may find ways to address them and to help to make this world a better place for all of us. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would bring us to eternal and everlasting life with you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Be assured that in the mercy and love of God, we are a forgiven people, and this day is a new day and a fresh start for each one of us. We're going to read, not as printed in the bulletin, Psalm 54, instead we're going to read responsively Psalm 1. Psalm 1. There was a choice this week and <coughs> I got mixed up. Blessed are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their light is in the law of the Lord, and on that law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they flourish. The wicked are not so, but are like the chief that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Thanks to uh, Julie Gangadine for helping us with our responses. She's one of our elders. I think that I'm reading Jeremiah. Are you, you, you're just reading James. Yes. And you're reading, yes. Okay, sorry. <laughs> our Old Testament lesson this morning is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 11, verses 18 to 20. Hang on. 
you'll find that reading, which somehow I didn't write down. Uh, in this version of the Pew Bible on page 803, starting at verse 18. Because the Lord revealed their plot to me, I knew it. For at that time he showed me what they were doing. I had been like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not realize that they had plotted against me, saying, let us destroy the tree and its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name shall be remembered no more. But, O Lord Almighty, you who judge righteously and test the heart and mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. And Lucy de Hingra will read our epistle lesson to us, one of our members. reading is from James chapter 3 verses 13 to chapter 4 verse 3 and verses 7 and 8 found found on page 1268 who is wise and understanding among you let him show you it by his good life by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom but if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but it is earthly, unspiritual of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but you don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, when you, ask you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves then to God, Resist the devil, and he will free you, and he will free, flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Thank you, Lucy. Michael Ramser and one of our elders will read the gospel. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, this morning reading is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 9, uh, verses uh, that's 30 to 37, and that's on page 1056. They left that place and, and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching the disciples. He said to them, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and after these three days he will raise. 
but they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum, where he was in the house. He asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because the way they were arguing about was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the twelve disciples and said, If anyone wants to be first, he must be very last and the servant of all. He took a little child and had him stand among them. Taking him in his arms, and he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me, the word of the Lord. Our hymn is number 631, Jesus' Hands Were Kind Hands. Let us pray together. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As Jesus and the disciples travel through Galilee, the crowds are always close by, hoping for healing or inspiration. Jesus wanted some quiet time so he could teach the disciples. So the group avoids attention as much as they can. Jesus teaches the disciples as they walk. Once again, Jesus instructs them about the Messiah to prepare them for the future. He tells them what to ex expect, saying the Son of Man will be betrayed into human hands and killed. Three days after his death, he will rise again. Though he tells them plainly, the disciples do not comprehend what he is saying. They do not understand, and they're afraid to ask him what he means. Out of earshot of Jesus, the disciples get into a heated discussion among themselves. Eventually, they arrive at their destination in Capernaum and go into a house. Inside, Jesus asks them what they were arguing about. The disciples do not want to answer. They remain silent. Along the way, 
they had been arguing over which one of them was the greatest. This is not something they want to reveal to their master. Jesus sits down and calls the twelve to come over. He says to them, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then Jesus takes a child and pulls the child into the middle of their circle. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the second time we read in Mark's Gospel that Jesus attempted to teach the disciples about what is ahead. However, they still failed to understand him. He tells them how he will be betrayed and killed. He also tells them he will be resurrected on the third day, and they simply cannot comprehend. Nor do they try to understand. Instead of considering what he was telling them, they argue among themselves about who is greater than the other. Jesus reacts by giving them a concrete example of what their ministry is all about. They are to welcome and treasure each person, no matter how insignificant even a child. If they want to be the greatest, they must make themselves the servant of everyone. It's interesting to me, anyway, that when Jesus called the disciples over, he did not attempt to teach them yet again about what was coming. Instead, he went back to basics. They do not understand that there is no one of them greater than the other. The society of the New Testament era was hierarchical. I mean, you know, somebody above somebody else and up and up until you get to the emperor. Those in charge told those under them what to do and when to do it. Everyone wanted to be on top, or at least a little higher up the ladder. Jesus' whole teaching was radical because he did not live in a hierarchical way. Those who wanted to follow him did so. Those who were not interested were free to go home. He lived in a way that challenged the organizational structure of their society. He shows them and he talks about a whole different way to live. It is collegial. Now in this lesson he goes even further, teaching that the greatest are to serve the least. If anyone wants to be first, they must serve the very lowest. The least are welcomed into their midst. Eventually, when the disciples, and I don't mean just the twelve, I mean all disciples of Christ, when the disciples follow Jesus' instructions, Everyone serves everyone else. Eventually, the Christ in me will see the Christ in you. Then we truly value one another. Followers of Christ become the servant of all we learn to welcome the least among us into our midst. The child whom Jesus thrust into the midst of that group that day 
had no special qualifications, we do not know anything about that child's heritage, religion, or worthiness. Jesus did not ask the disciples to decide what vital trait the child possessed to make him or her welcome. They were to welcome all children, to welcome the child into their midst meant they were welcoming God. This command still applies to us today. We're to welcome the lowliest person we see. In fact, we're to treat them as our equal. This instruction is the core of our discipleship. We don't simply love the big and the noteworthy and the important people, we also love the small and the unimportant. And then what is puzzling becomes clear. We don't have to discuss theology to know that we're to love God and love our neighbor. Suppose someone tells you something about your faith that you do not fully understand. When you don't understand, remember the basics. Ask yourself if what you're being told supports the most important parts of your faith. You can always spend more time considering the complex questions of life while you continue to see God's presence with everyone you meet. It is not so important to know what the future will hold as it is to live today in the fullest service of God. When in doubt, recall the greatest commandment, to love God and your neighbor. Jesus placed no qualifications on this command to welcome the least among us. Skin color, race, religion, sexual orientation, we're not supposed to put up any sort of prohibition. Rather, we are to be there for the vulnerable, the weak, and the ones in need. Jesus spent time with sinners, scandalizing the rulers of the synagogue. We can follow his examples. We can welcome the lowly one, in Jesus' name. Today, more than ever, we need to remind ourselves of these words. Around the world, children are dying and being killed in warfare in record numbers. Too many children live in poverty, even in Canada. Racism keeps rearing its ugly head with bias, injustice, and unfairness rampant. And in the midst of all these challenges, we're to do what we can to serve. Some things are difficult to figure out. This is not. We who follow Christ are called to a different standard of behavior. What we do is a choice. It's a choice with real consequences in our lives. It's a choice which may not always be easy to follow. It may not be easy, but the choice to love is always clear. Part of our own history includes the abuses which were suffered by the children of First Nations. Over decades, children were forcibly removed from their homes and taken to residential schools. The treatment they received was so bad that mortality rates were shockingly high. Exact numbers have never been determined because records were not kept and graves were not marked. But during some periods, 
in some schools, conditions were so bad that the mortality rate over five years was 50%. Worse, mortality rates among First Nations children in North America now are still much higher than in other populations. Today, we cannot undo what has been done, but we can take action to apologize for the past and improve the future. We have to choose what we will do. When we follow Christ, our choices often go against the normative standards of the day. We choose to love the insignificant and unimportant people because to love the least of these is to love God. It is the core of our faith. We're not called to judge. We are called to love. We follow Christ's command when we minister to the least, those most in need in our community, through our missions like Evangel Hall, Arise Ministries, Portland Place, and Boarding House Ministries. It's good to remember that we support these ministries because Jesus commanded us to love those who are most in need and welcome them into our midst. Jesus teaches us to love the least among us as a way to teach the disciples, us, that no one is greater than another. Even the smallest and most insignificant is vital. To love the least of these, we understand that we too are small and insignificant. And God loves us, not because of our innate worthiness, but rather because we are the children of God. We are ordinary, average, and insignificant people, at least almost all of us. We, at least most of us, are not rich and famous, nor important in the world's terms. And God loves us. We are made in God's image. Because we are filled with God's love for us, we can offer love to the small one beside us. And in so doing, the last shall be first. Hate cannot survive unchecked while we use our ability to love. Whatever we do to the least of these little ones, we do to God. God has given us this tool, our loving heart, to bring God into the midst of everything. Amen. We'll receive our offering.
thank you for all our gifts, O Lord. We turn back this portion to use, to you, that it might be used according to your will and purpose, that your love might be felt throughout the world. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Welcome everyone again. It's so nice to uh, be here in person. Coffee hour is after the service and uh, it sounds like it's a fun one today. So let's hope everybody can join us afterwards for coffee. Uh, I think we all remember it's out either door and behind me. Lunch Bunch is scheduled this week. It's uh, out of order because I went to a funeral last week. Uh, Tuesday, September the 24th at 11 a.m. And we had at some point been planning someone something different, but we're going to save that for another day. So if you're going to come to Lunch Bunch this week, please bring a bag lunch. Also, Wellness Energy Healing is suspended for the time being at St. John's uh, until further notice. Um, attendance was relatively low. Uh, and restarting will depend on if demand changes. The group wishes to thank St. John's for their generous support. Uh, this group meets in other places in the city, so you can talk to Nellie Chow if you uh, want further information. We, we haven't met with a healing prayer group for some time since the pandemic. So during the coffee hour, if you want to start that up again, please uh, talk to me. And uh, also we'll decide if we do that, do we want to do it in person or by Zoom? So, well, I think that there seems to be some interest in restarting it. So Healing Prayer used to always meet Thursday afternoon about two o'clock, uh, and but the time is open for discussion what works for people. Also, remember that uh, two weeks from now, October 6th, we will be celebrating communion. So we hope to have a good turnout in person to have communion on the 6th of October. And again, as we said, we're just really thrilled to welcome our uh, soloist, Emma Pushkalo, uh, with us into the choir. And, uh, and uh, Emma will be our main soloist throughout this year. So that we're, we're pretty happy about that. We thank everybody for their financial support of St. John's. We have been, as you know, collecting offering in person for quite some time now, but it still is also possible to uh, submit offering by mail or by electronic transfer of funds or by pre-authorized remittance. And we are actively looking for a treasurer, so please speak to anybody on the session if you have um, any interest or ability to do that role. I think those are all of the announcements, unless anybody has anything else. Then let us continue our service in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this life and all its blessings, for the joys that we find in life, the big and the small, for the gifts, the talents, more than we deserve, for the love which you give to us and which is at the heart of your purpose. 
and surpasses wisdom in all your works. For light in this world was brought once in Jesus Christ and shines evermore through the Holy Spirit. We pray through Jesus Christ our Lord that the light of God will dawn upon us daily, that we may always have a grateful and a loving heart and a will to love and serve you to the end of your days. We thank you for your guiding hand upon us, your steadfast love within us, the friendships that you give to us, and even those challenges that we face. Most of all, we thank you for the living presence of your spirit, the Comforter, that we are able to continue to go in your name and discern what you would have us do. We pray that in all things you would make us wise in the right use of your blessings, that we may be able to offer you our thanks all our lives. And as we pray for ourselves, remembering that we are known and loved and wanted in your body of Christ, we also pray for all people of all sorts and in all conditions. We pray for the well-being of those who suffer injustice, unfairness, war, and poverty. We pray for those people who suffer anxiety, concern, worry, and depression. We pray for those who suffer illness of every sort, of mind and body and soul. And we pray that each one of us might be part of your healing ministry, that together we might use our gifts and talents to help one another. Comfort and relieve all people according to their needs. Help us to be your loving hands and your faithful servants. Give us patience to know that what we do, however small, is vital in your world. And hope to know that even our smallest gestures are magnified through the work of your Holy Spirit and through your great love and power. We ask for all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, and we pray as we have been taught, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us for evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 706, Come Let Us Sing, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4.
know that you are the children of God, chosen, wanted, loved, and that God is with you everywhere you go. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you now and forevermore.